Welcome to Sierra Leone, a country with a rich culture and history. Sierra Leone is a country in West Africa on the Atlantic Ocean. It is bordered by Liberia to the southeast and Guinea to the northwest. The country has a tropical climate with a diverse environment ranging from savanna to rainforests. It's known for the white sand beaches lining the Freetown Peninsula. The capital city Freetown commemorates the nation's slave trade history with a cotton tree landmark and King's Yard gate. Today's documentary is going to be about the Sierra Leone National Museum. The museum is located at the junction of Saika Stephen Street and Pendeba Road in central Freetown. The museum's origin dates back before Sierra Leone's independence. Okay, my name is Oliver Linda Barnett. I'm the education officer at the Sierra Leone National Museum. The Australian National Museum was established on the 10th of December 1957. The gentleman who officially opened the museum to the public was then, he later on became the first Prime Minister of Sierra Leone. By then he was the Chief Minister under the British colony in Sierra Leone. And that is Samuel Timagai. Okay? He was our first Prime Minister of Sierra Leone. And the, Gentleman who spearheaded the founding of the museum with all his effort that does not go in vain. It's Moko Mok Charles Fire Ismo. He's a son of a free slave. He was born in Gold Coast, which today is known as Ghana. His school here at the first boys' high school, that is Gamma School, and he furthered his education in Good Shepherd Clinic in London. And later on, he came as a, a doctor in the area of gynecologist, okay? A gynae taking care of pregnant women, but he was culturally oriented and minded about it. So he thought it fit that Sierra Leonean need to have a home, a warehouse, a cultural site where they can maintain themselves for future generation of posterity. And that is why today we have the Sierra Leone National Museum. So I want to say thank you to the late Dr. Mokomok Charles Farah Eastman for a good job done in preserving Sri Lankan heritage. This is the cotton tree, also known as a kapok tree. When the slaves first landed, they walked up to this tree and held a Thanksgiving service thanking the Lord for their deliverance to a free land. These are the devils that are from the Sierra Leone culture. When they have festivals in the street, they dance around. They won't come out until the drum master has called for them using the right beat. These are the war drums. Each tribe has its own war drum that represents them. These talking drums were used to communicate with different villages. The original drums of Baibure And these are raffia caps and slings. 
worn and used by Baibura's war boys. capture the slaves, in the eyes of the sea they will come with them. They have an exercise room for female and male where they do some exercise in order for them to see their fitness if whether they can they can able to sustain themselves due to the weather in traveling along thousands of miles to take them to to go and sell them in Europe or America to their slaves uh, uh, masters and all those things. You have different, different, different portions in the island. You have an under cellar where they will put the, the slaves, and then you have also the upstairs where the slave trader, where you have a whole area where it's sort of like their warehouse where they keep their food stock, and also they have garages and uh, uh, storehouse. They have different, different sites in, in different, different sections in the island itself. They have their exercise room. They have a, they have exit point. No returning. If you are not fit to go after the exercise, where they will just send you through the water. They have all those portions and all those. Uh, uh, yeah. They have a cemetery. They have the kitchen. You know, different different section in the structure. When you get to the island, this is where history sleeps. You feel the presence of your ancestors. You feel the true story of an African when you get to the sign. Baibura is a warrior who fought against the British. Milton Magai was the first president of Sierra Leone.
How long have you been working here? Well, I've been in the National Museum for almost eight to nine years now. Mm -hmm. uh, just after I dropped my pen, doing my final exams in college, I was called by the institution to be part of them. Okay. And do you have positive experience working here? Yes, of course, because I'm somebody who is culturally oriented. Mm -hmm. And I love my land. I love land that I love Sierra Leone. And I love my culture because Sierra Leone culture is very unique. You know. Do you think it's important for everyone to understand Sierra Leone young culture? Very, very important, especially Sierra Leoneans. It's very, very vital for them to know their identity. You cannot be saying I'm a Sierra Leone and you don't know who you are. So you need to know your identity. And you know your identity, you have to raise with the museum. It's the National Museum because it tells you the story of Sierra Leoneans, okay? It gives the actual identity of Sierra Leoneans. Who you are, all the ethnicity in Sierra Leone need to know their specific, their identity specifically, especially indigenous who migrated because majority of Sierra Leoneans are migrated. It's from one place to another as a result of conflict within the sub-Saharan Africa and due to trading and exploration. So this is how, and also the, the, the transatlantic slave trade that took place during the event of slavery. Do you think it's important for the future generations to understand about the slave trade and what has been in the past and how the country has evolved from them? Very, very important. This is why we need to, we need, we need to sustain and preserve our culture. We need to do that so that posterity will also be part of it. We don't need to neglect it. And as a result of that, like, you, you are fortunate to, to, to be here today because we are trying, we are deliberating on a theme, a um, sustainable approach and preservation towards our local content. When you talk about local content, you talk about produce, you talk about things that you plant, okay, farming and all those things. And you talk about what you have in your land. It's it, the end product of it. You either consume it by eating it, or you put it on as a form of attire, dress, or it's something that you, 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 it's form of liquid, okay? Liquid consumption. So we look at all these areas and we say no. Is that time the government is playing a great role in the area of education? Okay, but there is need to complement the theoretical aspect of the classroom to that of visual learning. Mm -hmm. Looking at the object and then you learn from it. You have faster means that is one of that's one of the fastest way of learning now globally. Mm -hmm. So we need to do that. Because presently they are working on the educational sector is working on the civic education to bring it back to the classroom mm -hmm. because it's something that they've neglected. And the layman out there, you ask him concerning the culture of Sierra Leone, we say Sierra Leone do not have culture. Sierra Leoneans, their culture is dead. It's not dead, it's been, it's as a result of neglecting them. So neglecting it, so that is why they're using that statement that it is dead. But I always say that Sierra Leoneans are a very unique, a mixed culture, okay? Because you're looking at West Africa itself. I, I, I'm fortunate to travel to some of these West Africa country. And I do always try to compare and then and see the uniqueness of Sri Lankan culture. If you if you if you take an example of even the food that we eat, the substance we partake of, okay, Sri Lankan does have a very rich one. Maybe if you go to Ghana or even Guinea here, our neighbor that we share boundary with. Um, the way, the, the type of food that they have, that they eat, we have more than what they have. So Elonians, uh, 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 um, food, it entails almost all of the Nigerian food, as well as Guineans, as well as Liberians, as well as even if you take your back always to the East Africa, like Sudanese, the Sudan Empire that they fought for, as a result of that, we have this Timini. Most people always say you got them from Futa Jalo. They were not old in Futa Jalo. It's, due, it's as a result of they migrate to Futa Jalo. 
and then to Sierra Leone, but they came as a result of the Sudanese Empire. You have so many other ethnic groups that you have, even the Mende ethnic group, that's a result of the Mani invasion, and it's due to empire, quintessence, they were fighting for and all these things. And you have the liberated Africans, these were the captives that do not go on slavery. They capture them, they capture them again, as a result of the abolition in 1707, okay? And you have so many, and then you have the settlers, due to the American War of Independence, due to the cause of, um, of James Somerset case, and due to the Amistad revolt and all these things. Slavery had to, you see a gentleman's stool in the court of England, Lord Mansfield, and say to it, there is no constitutional right or clause that say you should enslave your fellow man. So slavery should stop. Okay, so all these people, had, they are here in Sierra Leone because from America, they took them to Nova Scotia, from Nova Scotia, they came here. This is the land that they find for them. That would be their home. So, and these people are known today as the Creole. Okay? We have the Akus Creole, we have the Marabu Creole. So that is it. So we have a very unique culture. We also have the, 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 the Limba ethnic groups who we have discovered here. Right at the Warawa Mountain, that's where they discovered them. You have the Bulong. All Australian, we have a very unique culture. So we really need to maintain it, we really need to pass it on. It's an heritage that we should pass on to work from one generation to another. We, we, we are fortunate, being an adult today, we, our, as we decide to give it to us as a legacy. So we need to maintain it and pass it to the posterity, to those that will come after us. It's very, very vital and important.